Okay. Okay, it's working. Okay, guys. Oh my God, it was open broadcaster software. I Can you guys uh, bring everyone over here? So if you still have that other live stream, can you just paste the link to this in that, in that uh, chat? Because I am never gonna use open broadcaster software again. I'm only using Google Hangout, all right? Okay, so it's fine now. No, everything is working, everything's better. I'm live, good to go. We got everybody in here. Great, works much better. Hi guys, okay, so we're gonna start off with a five minute Q&A and then we're gonna start building a recommender system, okay? We're gonna talk about several types of recommender systems in this episode and uh, we're going to do it in, the, in an IPython notebook, okay? OBS sucks, totally. So let's start off with a five minute Q&A and then we're gonna get started, all right? So come on, give it to uh, Google Hangouts, right? Bring, uh, I'm using Google Hang I've been using Google Hangouts for since forever. I just tried to do something different because I wanted to do up the quality of my stream, but that was just never again. What projects are you programming for fun? Uh, right now, I am just making content. I really wish I had the time to just do some research, uh, make some publications, uh, but join a research group online. But I love making content even more. So that's what I'm doing right now. If I wasn't, the project that I would be working on is probably trying to push the field forward uh, in terms of Bayesian, like probabilistic programming, like trying to move past deep learning into something that requires less data and com computation. Uh, how are you gonna use, are you gonna use TensorFlow? Not this session. Uh, what do you think of TensorFlow Fold? I've never heard of that. Lag came back. Um, okay. One question, this one's the one, okay, you work at Google, I don't. Apart from your videos, what do you recommend to learn machine learning from? Uh, Udacity has great courses, uh, Udemy, and uh, also Andrew Ong's course. Lag is not back, lag is good, video is okay, okay. Okay, no lag, thank you, okay. So we're gonna answer three more questions and then we're gonna get right into it because we've been lagging and, and doing some Dumb things. Okay, can you suggest a math book for machine learning? I would recommend Khan Academy. I would actually not recommend a textbook because every time I read a textbook, it just, I, I don't absorb it. You know, like I'll read it and I'll like get it uh, for a while, but after like a few months, I'll forget everything. So the way to do it is not just practice makes perfect, but practice makes retention. You have to continuously practice this stuff. And, and the way to do that is, uh, cheat sheets and Khan Academy, uh, like short bits of information as you go in your journey, okay? Rather than just sit there, read an entire textbook and then forget it after a few months, okay? How can a student get involved in machine learning research? Uh, join a research group online. Uh, there are several, if you go to the machine learning subreddit, they have a, they have a weekly uh, reading group. So that would be a good place to find people. What do you think of DataCamp, DataQuest and similar? Uh, all great projects. I don't know about them in particular. How many years have you been studying? On and off for like four years. Uh, what are your thoughts on C++ for ML and deep learning? Uh, C++ is great. I don't have time to deal with deadlocks and uh, like syntax and the STD library. We're focused on uh, algorithms and that's why I use Python. Can you recommend research topic for CS student? Uh, focus on uh, unsupervised learning and generative models. Can you recommend machine learning and management, how they go hand in hand? Management, like management for a company? Uh, uh, hmm. Well, you can try to find, the, if, you, if, you, if you model your company as a, as a machine learning problem, you can find what tasks are most profitable for your objective. And your objective could be to maximize profit for your company. So if you were to, if you were to look at the data of what people are doing in your company, if you were to put that in an Excel spreadsheet and then you could find those features that are most relevant and then 
and, and improve efficiency in those areas. Okay, so one more question and then we're going to get started. Which is best reading books for? What do you think of Harrison Kinsley's Semtex YouTube channel? Yeah, Semtex is great. Uh, he's the currently the most viewed guy on YouTube, but uh, yeah, he's he's a great guy. Okay, so so we're gonna get started. Uh, but but Saraj, what do you? Oh wait, Jake. Saraj, will you make some time to make a video about hyperparameter tuning? Yes, Jake. That is coming up. Hyperparameter tuning. That is coming up for sure because that is something I need to talk about. Practice makes permanent, exactly. So let's get started. Uh, but one thing is, every time I do this live stream, someone asks me to uh, freestyle. So I'm just going to freestyle off the dome right now uh, on something. So someone just say a topic, and then I'm just going to freestyle without music. I felt like last time was good, but it wasn't amazing. So I want to make this one amazing. Uh, how do you get control system with TensorFlow? That GitHub link. What if Siraj is just generated by machine learning? Uh, human learning, robots, okay, robots. <clears throat> when I was in seventh grade, I made my first robot. It flowed on the floor like it was a little float bot. I see the desk, green enemies looking at me, telling me you can't make that, no not. I said no, I'm gonna make it anyway. So I went back and went into my fiddle in place, yo. I put meteors and other things together and it made a little contraption, man it was against the weather. It went out in the rain. It got no short circuits. It came back, man. It was my lurking back. Okay, so that was it. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with this. And I didn't build a robot in seventh grade. It was more like 10th grade, okay? So that was a storytelling wrap, and now we're going to get started. So let me start screen sharing, and then we're gonna do this. So guys, let me give you the link to this, by the way. So I have the link, and we're going to review this together. And I'm gonna put it in the description. So. Okay, so here's a link to the code. Let me send you this, the link to the code. And I want to give a shout out to some people because I forgot about that. Nestor, Dan, Siddharth, Siddhant, Kapil, uh, Dan, David, okay, Alpha. Okay, so that was it. 417 people here are watching. I'm so excited for recommender systems. Okay, because there's so much cool shit we could do with this. There's so much to talk about, about recommender systems. Okay, so guys, let me add this to the description in real time time okay, boom link is there in real time now we're gonna start screen sharing okay here we go what do I want to screen share I want to share my screen okay so now that we have that let me minimize this Google hangout and we are going to do this okay here we go so let's start at the very beginning of this let's look at the very very beginning and I'm going to minimize my screen so Let's get started with this, okay? And let me see here, let me see here, let me see here, let me see here, okay? Great. So, let me, let me maximize what we've got here. We're gonna build a song recommender, okay? So the data set we're gonna use is, uh, also let me show myself because I need to show myself. New screen recording, not screen recording, what was it? It was movie recording. Okay. There I am in the corner. Hi. Right, okay. All right. So, great. So I'm there like always. So we're going to build a song recommender. And now, how are we going to do that? How are we going to build a song recommender? A recommender. <clears throat> this is a pro This is a problem that Amazon has, Netflix has, Hulu has. Every website has this problem. How do we personalize content for users, and how do we feed it to them? Okay. So that's what we're going to try to. That's what we're going to think about this live stream. How do we personalize content for, for users and feed it to them? Okay, uh, and a dating recommender. We're going to do that too uh, in the in the next weekly video, not not this video. So before we even before we even think about this, let's th talk about the goal of recommender systems is to identify relevant data for our users, whether that's articles, movies, games, people, places. In fact, let me just let's just look at what Amazon recommended for me. Okay, let's see what what did Amazon recommend for Siraj? What do we got here? Valentine's Day, that's not personalized. Uh, what do we got here? Recommend, inspired by your browsing history. <laughs> okay, okay. so if you look at this, you would think you know something weird is going on here. I swear I needed costumes for a, a, a video that I'm making. But what it did was it looked at what I've looked at in the past and it recommended items based on my past history, okay? And books on machine learning. So it's looking at my past history. But it's not just my past. It's what other similar users have looked at as well. We're going to talk about these different types of systems in a second, okay? 
So I was looking at a bit, I was, I'm looking at making a video and I needed costumes for it that were, anyway, like a whole choir singing my name. Anyway, that's uh, for the system. So there are three types of recommender systems, okay, that we're gonna talk about. The first one is content-based, the second one is collaborative, and the third one is popularity. Okay, so we're gonna go through these step by step, okay, but before we talk about any of these, and we're gonna talk about them in depth, we're gonna first load our music data. So let's look at our music data, okay? What do we have for our music data? Uh, for our music data, we are going to look at two, two files, okay? So the first one is, let's see what this is. This is a lot of songs, okay? There's, there's, there's a lot of songs here, and then the next one is the, 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 the next database of songs. So let's just, let's just look at the website for this. Like, what is this? What is this data? We always wanna analyze what that data is that we have first. Before we do anything, what is that data that we have? So this is the data set, and it's a mixture of songs from a bunch of music websites and user ratings, okay? So it's a collection of songs and the ratings that user gave, users give, gave those songs. So Last.fm's a website, Thirsty, This Is My Jam, Secondhand Songs, it's a bunch of different uh, ratings by users of their favorite songs. That's what we're gonna train our model on, okay? Now we have two different data sets. Our job is to integrate this data, okay? This is a very important part of the, of the data processing pipeline. It is, we want to integrate this data, okay? So to integrate this data, we're going to use pandas, okay? So what we first do is we say, okay, here are, here are our two files, okay? And let me make this a little bigger. These are our two files. One's a CSV and one is, uh, is a triplet, okay? These, these, are, these are triplets right up here. The triplet is user ID, song ID, and listen count, okay? So we wanna integrate these two together. So the first thing we'll do is we will read the table uh, using pandas and we'll store it in this variable. And then we'll say, okay, let's define those three columns, user ID, song ID, and listen count. Then we're gonna read the metadata, which is that other file that we had, and we're gonna store it in this variable, song df2. So df means data frame. So we have two data frame, uh, two data frames, and uh, we're going to combine them with pandas merge function. We're gonna combine both of them. And it's, a, it's actually uh, one, one of those, uh, so whenever, we, whenever we're integrating two data sets together, sometimes they're duplicate columns, and we can, we can drop those duplicates and replace them, okay? And the way we do that is what we, we specify uh, what that column is that's a duplicate so that we can then replace it. So in our case, song ID is the one duplicate across these two data sets, so we'll replace it. And that's how we merge it. And the final result, the integrated, the integrated, uh, uh, data frame variable is called song df. And we can look at what this, what this now looks like, okay? So once we, um, once we have that done, let me, let me uh, give you guys the full file as well. Uh, yeah, let me give you guys the full file. Hold on a second. So you guys have everything. So check this out. So here's the full file which I haven't pasted, I was just, share that, share that with each other. Okay, so here, here is the, here's the data, okay? So let's see what, what this is. We have an index, we have a user ID, a song ID, listen count, title, release, artist name, and year. What do we want to do? We want to, it, it is very similar to an inner join in SQL, exactly but it's using pandas. It, it's, it's the same conceptual idea. It's not SQL, but it's conceptually the same. Uh, exactly, well, so someone asked, what feature should we be using? And that's a great question. So with deep learning, architecture engineering is the new feature engineering, okay? If there's anything you guys remember from this session, remember that architecture engineering is the new feature engineering. That means that all of that engineering complexity that we had to do, thinking about what features are relevant and what features aren't, doesn't matter. Because with deep learning, it learns the high-level features from whatever features we give it, more or less. There are some caveats, okay? More or less. But it learns those. And so the complexity then moves to the architecture. Rather than hand-tuning features, we're hand-tuning models. What are the hyperparameters? What are the, you know, uh, types? What is the type of neural network we want to use for this specific data set? 
Okay, so in our case, what we want to do is we want to predict a song for a user. The songs, sorry, plural, songs that uh, this user will like. We don't want to predict artists. We just want to predict songs. So what is something we could do that could just make it easier for us to look at and just make it easier for our model in general? Well, why don't we just, why don't we do, so the first part of this is why don't we do, we're going to, be doing the data transformation step. We've already integrated our data into one file. The next step would be to clean our data, but we our data is relatively clean. I mean, there's not any really, it's, it's a relatively cl clean data set. So let's just move right on to transformation. And the, the transformation we're gonna do here is we're going to combine the song and the artist uh, columns together because we don't care about the artist, we just care about the song. So just for simplicity's sake, let's just go and combine these two columns. So what's happening here is the first thing it's doing is it is um, it is uh, going to we're going to create a subset of the data. So the first ten thousand songs that's what we're going to focus on. The first ten thousand songs we're going to merge the song the song and the artist title into one column. Okay, so it's one column that we're going to focus on. Now we're going to show the most popular songs in the data set. And so what does that look like? We're going to group them by the listen count and the percentage. So there are four lines here. Let's let's let's. Uh, hey, Quantum, really appreciate it. Mikhail, really appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to show these most popular songs. Okay, so we're going to start off with this is what it looks like. But let's let's talk about these four lines of code in detail. So we're going to so let's talk about these four lines of code in detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, what this does is. It groups, so the first line is it groups them in order of listen count descending, okay, the listen count. Then it gets a total sum of listen counts to calculate the percentage, and that is what's on this right-hand column. Then it's going to add a new column called percentage. To, to calculate that percentage, it, 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 it summed up all those listen counts, and it had to calculate the percentage, and it does this by dividing by the listen count times 100, and that's going to give us this 0 0.45, 0 0.32, and then finally it's going to list them in... Uh, the most popular songs at the top. Okay, so now we have this subset of data. And this now this is what we're talking about, right? We wanted, we wanted something really simple for us to look at, for us to understand. Now, if we really wanted to, we didn't have to do this step. We didn't have to, but it's simpler to look at, okay? And our model will likely be more accurate. And just because, and another thing, just because uh, feature engineering isn't as relevant with deep learning, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't engineer our features at all. You know, like for simplicity's sake, Having this is just simpler to look at, and it helps. Now, it's not a necessity, but it helps, OK? And, the, and whatever you do can have the difference, can, can that last mile difference between you know, your model being 98% and 99% accurate. If you're trying to get there, then yeah, go ahead and, and make it more simple, OK? So that's what we did for that. When do we get to hear the choir? Uh, Frederick, we'll talk about that later. Uh, OK. so. So that, that's that. Now let's keep on going. We haven't actually done any recommendations yet. We're just, we're just doing some data pre-processing. What do I mean by listen count? Listen count is the number of times each song was listened to in general by all users, OK? Because we're going to start off with a very naive approach for recommendations, a very naive approach. OK, so let's count the number of unique users in the data set. OK, to do this, we'll say, OK, what is the number of unique values, really handy, uh, method right here, unique, OK? And then we say, OK, well, there's 365 users in this data set. Great. Just so we know how many users there are. And whenever you're looking at a data set, be sure to look at these things, OK? Use IPython notebooks. Look at all of your columns. Analyze your data. See what count of users there are, what count of everything there is. What is the percentage? Shouldn't it sum to 1? Um, No, no. So the percent, it's it's not it's not percentage uh, in relation to uh, all songs. It's percentage in relation to. Uh, hold on. Actually, hold on a second. You are right. This code needs to be recompiled. <laughs> this this needs to be recompiled. It, so the percentage here needs to be be altered. So so good 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 call, uh, Tina. Good, good call. Yeah. Okay. So, but. Anyway, so let's keep going. That, that's the basic idea. OK, so we're going to count the number of unique songs in the data set, 5, 000, about 5,000. And now we're going to create our song recommender. OK, so 
The first thing we'll do is we're going to split it into training and testing data. And we're going to use a train test split function from Scikit-Learn. OK, that's what Scikit-Learn gives us. Whenever we do any machine learning, before we train our model on anything, we always want to split our data into training and testing data. OK? That's what we want to do. And we're going to and we're say, arbitrarily, let's pick 20% as our testing size. And then it'll know that 80% is our training size. OK? So there's that. Now let's, it says, OK, so, sim, so the first thing it's doing here is it's saying, simple popularity recommender class can be used as a black box. Well, we're not going to look at it as a black box. We're going to look at this code in a second, OK? But what it does is it says, OK, based on the popularity uh, of each song, cre uh, create a recommender based on this training data, and then print out for user 5, given this user ID, what are the recommended songs? And it's going to print it out. So what does this look like in code? So to, to look at this in code, let's, let's look at this class. OK, so we're going to look at this class, actually. So let me go right into this, this class. So in this recommenders file, right? So what is this, what is this method that it's lo looking at? Let's look at this together. It says recommenders popularity recommender pop. OK, let's look at what that, that is here. So this is a recommenders file. And now we want to look at the popularity recommenders uh, class. So where is that? OK, here it is, popularity recommend. Let me, let, me, let me increase the size of this. So let's just look at this create uh, function. OK, so what is it doing here? And th this is what it's doing, OK? So this is a very naive approach. It's not personalized. But what it does is it says, OK, based on your training data and a user ID, we want to get a count of the user IDs for each unique song as a recommendation score. OK, so basically what it's saying is, how many times have, have each song has each song been listened to? And then sort the songs based on a recommendation score. Now, what is that recommendation score? It, the recommendation score is uh, this given by the, the score that the user that, that the score that the user gave it. And we can find that, hold on. The score that the user gave it, hold on a second. So we're calculating the score by the, the number of times that a song has been listened to in general. And that is that metric that we're using, using for the score. That's it. Then we rank those. So we, so, we, so we rank those in order. So all it's doing, all this is doing, is it is giving you, for any user, the top 10 recommended songs in general. And it doesn't focus on the user, OK? It's not focused on you. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't care. I care about you, but it doesn't care about you, OK? I'm sorry. Uh, but that's just life, OK? <laughs> but it's saying, what are those top 10 songs that are going to be recommended to you? And those top 10 songs are just in general. They're just the most popular songs. There's no, there's no personalization happening here. This is the naive approach. So if we give it user 5, it's going to say, OK, here are the top 10 songs, Harmonia, Undo, and then Dog Days. OK, well, what about for user 8? Harmonia, Undo, and Dog Days. It doesn't care about the user. That's a naive approach, okay? And this is before machine learning. So we wanted to show that I wanted to show the most trivial case before we do machine learning, okay? That was the most trivial case. Now we're going to focus on exactly Kevin. It's the top Kevin. It's the top ten songs based on the listen count, okay? So the now we're going to focus on the personalization case, okay? This is the, now we're going to talk about some machine learning. Okay, you guys ready for this? So to talk about some machine learning. Okay, now we're going to do a different type of recommender system. It is called an item similarity. The top songs are based on just listen count. That's it so far. Hacker, 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 listen count. Okay, so focus on item similarity based recommender systems. What the hell is this? Let's talk about this. So. Here is a great website. So there are two types of so there are two types of recommender systems. Okay, there are content based and collaborative based. Content based predict what you like based on what you've liked in the past. Collaborative systems predict what you like based on what other users liked. Now most major services like Netflix and Hulu use a hybrid approach. So it's not just what you like; it's what you liked in the past and what other users liked, and it combines those approaches in a, in, a, in a way. But right now, 
We're going to focus on collaborative. Uh, Sang Sangram, you're not too late. Right now, we're going to focus on a collaborative approach. And we can split the collaborative approach into two different approaches, okay? Item, item collaborative and user item collaborative. Let's talk about each, okay? So let's talk about, um, let's see, which one do we want to talk about first? We want to talk about item, item, okay? So let's talk about this. So user item. So what does user item collaborative approach look like? Well, look at this. We're creating a matrix of values. So for each user here, we, we list their rating for each item. So you know this, this user right here would, let me share this link as well. OK, check out that link. So this user, all the items that they like, OK? All the items that this next user like, all these items that this next user like. From this matrix, we're going to calculate similarity. Now, that is a user item, OK? And we're going to talk about that. Now, this is item item, collaborative filtering. filtering. So this is what item item looks like. So let's just look into the code, because that's what we're about to do, item item. So it's saying, OK, so create is item similarity recommender, initialize this class, and then create it for a user, and then print out the recommendations. So let's look at this code, OK? What is this code doing? So OK, so here we are in item, uh, in item similarity recommender, OK? So let's look at what it's doing. Here, there's, there's a bunch of these helper methods, but what is, the, what is that main method that we're looking at, OK? What is that main method? The main method is, OK, right here, generate the top recommendations. OK? So here we go. So the first thing it's doing is it's going to create a co-occurrence matrix. OK, that's what it's doing. It's creating a co-occurrence matrix. Let's talk about what a co-occurrence matrix is. A co-occurrence matrix, here's an example. Let's assume that a, someone, a bunch of users bought a bunch of different products. So what we would say is, let's see. Uh, this is, this is the one right here. So for, so for each product, what is the likelihood that a user also brought the, bought this? Not, not the likelihood. For each user, how many times? Let me repeat it one more time. Calm down. For each product, what is the number of times that a user who bought that said product bought another product? OK? So for product 1,001, that user bought Whoever, the number of times people brought 1,001, they bought 1,002 one time. They bought 1,003 three times. Where we are creating a co-occurrence matrix, OK? So a co-occurrence matrix in our case would be for item items. So, but for, for, so songs. Songs are items in our case. Songs are items, OK? So we are creating a matrix of songs, OK? So we want to calculate the weighted average of the scores in a co-occurrence matrix for all user songs. Then we're going to sort the indices based upon their value and maintain the corresponding score. So, so we've created a co-occurrence matrix of songs that users like. Okay, So basically, based on what songs you've liked in the past, we can see those, those top songs that you've liked. And then based on those top songs, what are the users that like that, those songs the most? And then what are those songs that they like the most? So it's kind of like a second order. Uh, or it's like a second order function. How is a co-occurrence matrix different from a normal matrix? Great, great question. Well, um, I mean, a, a normal matrix is just um, a matrix of users and songs and a bunch of other features. A co-occurrence matrix is we are taking the same, the same value for both our are rows and columns. So it would be songs and songs, OK? So based on this song, how many song times did you like what, what this other set of songs, OK? So we're creating a co-occurrence matrix. And based on what you've liked in the past, other users, uh, what you've liked in the past, what are the most likely other songs you'll like based on what other similar users have liked? OK, so that is what we did for the personalized song. OK, and they tend to be sparse matrices. Kyle, great insight. These co-occurrence these co matrices tend to be sparse because not all the, because, the, because why is that? Because the space, the space of possi possible songs is so vast that you can't just say that 
whoever likes this song is going to like every other song, right? There are millions of songs out there. So we, whenever we're dealing with recommender systems, we, have, we tend to have a lot of sparsity, more so than I've seen in a lot of other applications. So this is one of those fields where dealing with sparsity is very important. Here's what the result of doing that gave us. Here's what the result gave us. It gave us this list of scores. Now we can rank these, okay? And we rank these up to 10, and that's going to be our recommendations. So that is one. Is it feasible to have a matrix with such huge dimensions? Yes, and we routinely do in data science. We routinely have huge ass matrices, okay? We routinely have huge ass matrices that we load into memory. I'm sure there are better ways, just like there are, there must be better ways of um, sampling data than uniformly random. But we just, you know, we're moving fast and we need people to be focusing on these things. But right now, yes, we just load the entire fucking matrix into memory. Okay, so that is that. Now, we've got our personalized model, and this is just repeating the same thing for a different user. Okay, let's keep on going here. Let's keep on going. Okay. And we could use the same matrix for songs. So based on a song, what is a similar song you'll like? Why? Because, the, well, the first one used a you know, second order. It looked at not just the song. It used the co-occurrence matrix to see, based on these songs, let's see what users like. Now, this is just looks, looks at the raw song matrix. And it gives us scores for that. Now, this is not using deep learning. I want to say that right up front, right up front. This is not using deep learning. It's just using. Uh, linear algebra via matrices, OK? That's all it's using. And we can get good results from this, OK? OK, so some people are saying that they prefer it when I code. And uh, I got feedback last time that they prefer it when I don't code. So we're going to see. We're going to see. This is the first live stream I've ever done where I'm not doing uh, any code. I'm just having it there. So I'm going to see feedback based on this. And then overall, I'll decide how to move forward. Like I already decided this live stream not to ever use OBS ever again. So that was one thing. And then based on the feedback in general from here, I'm going to decide if I'm going to uh, code next time or just look at it like this, OK? So we'll see. So, so make sure to give me your feedback, brutal, honest feedback. You know, you know me, guys. You know how I love it, OK? I'm here waiting for you to code, OK? OK, we are going to, we're, we are going to get to deep learning, OK? Clone yourself and do both. I wish that was possible. Coding is better. OK. I'm going to post a notebook. All right. Coding is you. Yeah. Yeah, OK. OK, so, okay, so I'm going to code um, a mix, a mix, coding. All right. It's getting difficult to follow. OK, OK, so OK, so everybody wants code. OK, OK, clearly. OK, OK, guys. OK, 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 you guys missed me. Go. I promise. That next live stream, I will code, OK? But it's just that this one I've set up so that I don't code, because that was the feedback that I got, overwhelming feedback, OK? So but now I am promise I'm going to code from now on moving forward. But let's just keep going with this, OK? Um, God damn, people are uh, just uh, going back and forth. Yeah, OK, we'll have a poll. We'll have a poll. That's a good idea. Hitesh, great idea. We'll have a poll. Let's keep going. So OK, what are we doing here? OK, so we've, we've done our uh, personalized item-based collaborative filtering. OK, now we're going to do what's called calculate the, we want to measure the performance of our two models. What was our first model? The first model was we want, we, the first model was a not based on you at all. Remember, it was just based on the popularity of a song. The next model was based on you using a co-occurrence matrix, right? It was a collaborative filtering model. Now, how are we going to measure the performance of these two models? OK? The, the poll will be 50-50. Great. How are we going to measure the performance of these two models? We're going to use something called precision recall. Now, what does precision recall look like? Let's look at this. Precision recall is a good way of, of measuring the value of our recommender system. Now, I have got a great link for this that I'm going to throw up on the screen here. Let me, let me find this link. It's an awesome link, OK? Here it is. Uh, and let me, let me paste it for you guys, too. OK, so check out this link. I'm going to throw it up, OK? So what is precision recall? Let me, let me blow up this, uh, this image. This is what it is. So there are two metrics here, precision and recall. 
Okay, so precision and recall. Precision is the based on some. So let me let me hold on a second. Precision is the proportion of top results that are relevant, considering some definition of relevant to our problem domain. What is that definition of relevant to our problem domain? It could be the number of times a song has been listened to. It could be uh, the number of users that um, have all liked a song. Some value of relevancy, okay, that we're going to define. And, and recall is that would measure the proportion of all relevant song results included in the top results. Okay, so they are measuring the relevancy of songs in relation to, so precision is relation to the top 10 results, and then re recall is how good are they in relation to all of the songs. So there are two different measures, okay? There are two different measures, okay? So I promise next live stream I'm going to code every single bit, okay? I promise. Because you know me, I, every live stream I have coded everything, okay? So I will continue to do that. That's where I feel most at home. I'm just going to do it this way this one time. All right, so we're going to use precision and recall to calculate this. Now, we've got a class that does this, okay? And when we get to the graph, we're going to plot, plot the graph. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. So precision is the y-axis, and recall is the x-axis. And what it looks like is, let me, let me make this bigger. What it looks like is, it looks pr pretty much like the item similarity model has higher values for recall and precision up, up to a certain point. So basically, this tells us that our item similarity model is better than our popularity model. It's more accurate. Now, F, now Amit made a great point. Uh, F1 score is also a good measure, okay? There are, there are several. Precision is one, recall is another, F1 score. There's a lot of ways we could measure how good a, um, how good, or sorry, how good a model is in relation to another model, okay? So that was it for our item base. Now we have one more type of recommender system that we're going to look at. Now, this is a matrix factorization-based recommend recommender system. OK, so what, what, so what am I talking about? Hold on a second. OK, so hold on. What is this? Uh, OK, DMV calling me. OK, so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create this recommender system, OK? And we're going to talk about GANs in, GANs in a second. But OK, so let's, my phone is in my ear right now. Can you like, let me just shut this up. OK, so let's focus on our recommender system to do this. OK. and. Finally, all these things are out of my ear. So we're going to use, we're going to compute SVD to calculate our recommenders, rec uh, recommendations. Let's talk about what this is doing. Okay, so, uh, so this, so the singular value decomposition. Okay, so what is this? It is a matrix A with. So let me let me throw up a. So the SVD is a way that we can perform matrix factorization which is a technique that is used to build recommender systems, okay? So the SVD is, a, basically it's a matrix, and it's a factorized matrix of the original similarity matrix. So we'll create some similarity matrix, and then we'll perform this process right here in this method called singular value decomposition. Now what this does is it ultimately outputs three values, okay? What are these three values? So U, S, and V, T. U represents user vectors, okay? Uh, S represents the uh, item vectors, and and then VT is points in a two-dimensional space. So, so what we are doing is we're going to use SVD to compute ratings. So it's going to 
In vector space, it's going to create user vectors, it's going to create item vectors, and it's going to create a joint embedding vector for both of them in a two-dimensional space. And we're going to use these vectors to measure the distance from one user's, uh, one user's preferences and another user's preferences. And whoever has the smallest distance what, between users, we're going to use their songs as recommenders. Okay, that's 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 kind of uh, an explanation that we're talking about. So it's 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 a, it's a little like PCA. Yeah, it's a little like principal component analysis. Exactly. We are vectorizing matrices. We're vectorizing matrices, and then we're com we're computing the distance between matrices. Uh, okay, so. It's it's not clustering. It's um, okay. Hold on. Okay. So so let's see what we have here. Do I have any links for SVDs? So 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 this 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 whole this whole method here of computing the SVD and then using it to estimate ratings is how matrix factorization is used to recommend. Uh, Products for users, so we can look at. Let me let me show you guys this. So check 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 this out for a second. So this is the input that we're going to give it. It's a it's a user item uh, matrix, okay? And this is what we perform singular value decomposition on. So the items are going to be songs, and the users are the users, okay? Once we perform SVD on this, it's going to give us a set of vectors, and once we have those vectors. We're going to measure the distance between vectors to give us recommend recommendations. That's the most simple way of putting it. Where it's going to measure the distance between vectors to give us recommendations. Okay, and and down here it's got a little bit of the intuition behind it. But um, so and we we can plot those, and that's where this code ends. But I want to talk about. Deep learning right now for a second, okay? Because we haven't done deep learning yet. This is just, this is just, um, this is without deep learning. So let's let's talk about deep learning right now, okay? So let me pull this up. Hold on. Let me pull this up. So what is a good? So we, so this code doesn't have deep learning because I think a good one is like Hulu has a great. So I think Hulu has state of the art. Yes, Hulu has state of the art right now in recommender systems. So what is what is Hulu doing here? So so right now I think Hulu has state of the art. They've got state of the art in recommender systems. So let's look at what they're doing for deep learning. Now there are a lot of ways to apply deep learning to this problem set, right? So if we so here's one way. Okay, so their method is called CF Nade. Okay, that's that's what they call their method. They definitely need some marketing to help with that that name. But uh, so what they did was they said, okay, let's take an example. Now here's an example that they're using, and let's say a user rated four movies: Transformers, SpongeBob, uh, Ninja Turtles, and Interstellar, with the scores four, two, three, and five on a five star scale. They're going to create a joint probability of that vector, factorize it as a product of conditionals by chain rule. Now what the f did I just say? So this is what it looks like. It's going to calculate the probability of a, that the user gets transformers at four star rating conditioned on nothing. Then it's going to give the probability that a user gets SpongeBob a, ra a rating, a two star rating conditioned on what ha just happened. And then the probability of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles conditioned on that, conditioned on that, conditioned on that. So you see what I'm saying? This is a chain rule. It's a chain of probabilities based on what previous previously has occurred. So it's a chain of probabilities and. Each conditional is modeled by its own separate neural network. And the parameters for all of these neural networks are shared amongst all models. So it's got several neural networks for all of these conditionals. Can you imagine how many neural networks? Can you imagine how many neural networks they're using for this? Okay, so they've got a lot of neural networks, and they're going to uh, Minimize the negative log likelihood of the probability of the vector among all users. Okay, so that's one, that is like the state of the art way of doing it. Okay, so we could black box all of this, right? Obviously, it's a 10 lines of code, but we're, we're just looking at it theoretically in detail. Like, what is, what is the cutting edge right now in the field? Okay, so 
and, and let me let me show you guys this link as well. So leading edge right here. Okay, so so uh, let's go back to where we were. And yeah, so I think we went through all of it actually. Yeah. Okay, so cool. We we went through all that that code and um, Yeah, we're going to talk more about recommender systems. This was nearly not enough to talk about it. We're going to do a lot more. This was a good high-level overview. This was good, but we're going to do a better high-level overview, or sorry, an, an additional high-level overview uh, later on. Okay. Stop screen sharing. Okay, back to me. Hi guys. Okay, so that was it for the code, and we're going to end with another five-minute Q and A. Okay. So. What else is on, guys? We're going to. I will link to code for a deep learning based recommender. Right now, we want to learn the concepts. Okay, deep learning. There's a lot of there's a lot of conceptual um, things we have to learn about recommenders before we get to deep learning. Because I think that deep learning for recommender systems is the most complex. Uh, task right now in in deep learning to me there it's actually more complex than generative adversarial networks uh, so we're going to talk about it more this was clearly not enough i'm not satisfied but i'm satisfied i'm satisfied with this live stream but i'm not satisfied that i've talked about it enough okay so rap about music recommenders i rapped already guys okay um okay uh rap about music recommenders okay so that was the fourth person so uh here we go uh Yo, rap about music recommenders. I see this girl out there, she's like a sender. She's trying to give me some mail, say get out of here, but I'm not going back, I gotta drink my beer. Not really, I don't drink beer, I'm more a coffee drinker. Man, this is crazy, you could call me Sean Spinker. I go out every day on the streets telling people, hey, I like this song, they're like, man, you need to drink a Beeple, Bapple, Snapple, all these drinks, but I'm bored, man, I got songs, man, I'm done with that, so I, okay. Is it possible to write a collaborative filtering algorithm without deep learning? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. That's 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 what we that's what we just did. Okay, and I should have clarified that. Okay, what do you think about trying to group possible actions and optimize path, taking in the group in reinforcement learning to reduce size size of state space? Okay, reinforcement learning in general should be applied everywhere. It is going to be applied everywhere because, yo, PathNet, okay, PathNet by DeepMind, okay? PathNet, let me, let me link to PathNet, but this is, this is so dope because, because they, applied, they applied reinforcement learning to a neural net architecture. Check, check this out, check out that link. I'm gonna link to it in the description for people watching this. But it used a reinforcement, reinforcement learning agent inside of a neural network to find the optimal parameters. So get, get this for a second. It is looking inside of, it is using an AI inside of an AI, which is a neural network, to find the optimal hyperparameters. How dope is that, okay? And so that's that. So yes, we can use reinforcement learning everywhere, including recommender systems. Two more questions, and then we are out of here, okay? Um, how much usage data is typically required to make a good performing recommender system? Rocio, great, great question. You definitely need a lot of data, like 100,000 plus sets. There's a, lot of, of there's a lot of recommender system libraries out, I mean, sorry, data sets out there, publicly available. I'll link to them in the description. But you need a lot. You need a lot, OK? If you want it to be accurate, you need a lot. And it, and don't be intimidated by that because it's everywhere. Okay, well, actually, I'll, I'll take two more. Favorite entrepreneur. My favorite entrepreneur is probably, my favorite entrepreneur is Tupac Shakur because Tupac faced so much oppression. He faced so much suffering. And in the face of all of that, Tupac believed in himself enough to broadcast himself to the world and say, hey, I'm Tupac Shakur. I don't care how many haters I have. I am going to be myself, and I'm going to 
be a, essentially a messiah for a bunch of people. And so yeah, Tupac is my favorite uh, entrepreneur. I also have a book uh, um, of Tupac's poetry called The Rose That Grew Through Concrete. One more question that we're gonna talk about. Let's make it a good one, okay? When are you making a robot with machine learning? Next video. Okay, I just said it, so now it has to happen. So the next weekly video, we're gonna make a robot, okay? So, Hitesh, if you wanna do research, post in the Slack channel. Guys, we need our own research group, okay? We need our own research group. I want publications coming out of this community, okay? You guys are so smart, we need to build a research community, okay? We are going to build a research community, okay? We are going to publish. We are going to build a brand that publishes world-class machine learning research, okay? So that's what we're gonna do, all right? All right, so, so that's it for the live stream, okay? And next time I'm gonna code everything, this time I didn't. Uh, I love you guys, and for now, I've got to edit this next video. I, I just have to edit it myself. Like, Udacity has offered me an editor, but I just cannot do it. I just have to do it myself right now. Okay, so that's what I gotta do, and uh, thanks for watching, bye.